The George Washington Memorial Parkway is a 25 mile long road that follows the Potomac River from his home in Mount Vernon up to McLean, Virginia, with an optional add-on to visit Great Falls. This route is ran by the National Park Service and has many stops of great historical significance along the short road. My dad and I set out to explore the route in one day and here's everything we saw during our drive on the George Washington Memorial Parkway. Let's jump into it and let me know what your favorite spot is in the comments. Hey guys, I'm here with Pops. We're in Washington, D.C. today driving the George Washington Memorial Parkway. Our first stop on this road trip is Mount Vernon, which is the official start of the parkway. That's where George Washington lived. Mount Vernon was the home of George and Martha Washington and their family, and at one point in time it was an over 8,000 acre estate. Now the estate is around 500 acres with 30 buildings and many different things you can tour. If you want to visit, be sure to get your tickets in advance as they often sell out. We only explored the property and museums for a few hours and you could easily spend a half day here. Here are some of the things you must see. First, you should see the new tomb at Mount Vernon, which is where George and Martha Washington are buried. Next to that, you definitely need to visit the Slave Memorial and Cemetery. This was a sobering area to walk through and a horrible part of Mount Vernon's history. At one point in time, there were over 300 people enslaved here. After that, you can explore the remaining farms and gardens before walking back up to take the house tour. Just in case you didn't notice, this road trip today is going to focus more on history than most of the road trips do. As you walk up to the mansion itself, there are many other buildings you can see and a few you can even peek your head in. For us though, the next stop was to get in line to tour the mansion. You had to book the mansion tour in advance and it was a $2 add-on charge when we did it. They didn't allow any video in the mansion so I can't show you anything, but it is a pretty interesting tour. Be sure to also come outside and see the Potomac River, which is a great view from outside of the house. I was hoping to see a good view of the exterior of the house, but they were working on it and there was construction equipment all around it. From there, we decided to walk through the museums before continuing our road trip. If you're into history, then the Museum and Education Center is a place you could easily spend a few hours. One of the central exhibits talks all about Mount Vernon and what life was like there, including how it was preserved to be seen today. The other main exhibit takes you all the way through George Washington's life, including how it started as a surveyor and all the way to his presidency. There's also an exhibit that talks about slavery and what it was like for slaves at Mount Vernon. Of course, one of the most visited exhibits in the museum is all about his dentures. Contrary to popular belief, they were not made out of wood. All right, Pops, how many schools are named after Washington in the United States? Oh my gosh. 800. 740, that's pretty good. That's well done. Leaving Mount Vernon, we're heading out on a 24 mile road trip. After a mile of driving, we made it to our first stop at Riverside Park. This is a viewpoint for the Potomac and Mount Vernon. You can't really see Mount Vernon, but I think it's right over there. There's also an 18 mile bike and walking path that goes along the entire parkway if you want to see it without using a car. Three minutes later, we were exiting the parkway again to visit Fort Hunt Park. This is our next stop, Fort Hunt Park, where there's some old batteries. Fort Hunt was built in 1897 to strengthen the area's defenses. This was right before the Spanish-American War, but it didn't see any action during that war. We're right here, Battery Mount Vernon. This area was once owned by George Washington. The remaining old batteries are open and you can explore them however you'd like. It's pretty cool to be able to walk inside of them, climb some of the stairs, and take some time exploring this unique part of history. This is a fascinating old historic spot. There's a lot of trash and stuff which is a bummer, but honestly it's pretty well kept up other than that. Heading on to grab some sandwiches for lunch and then take them to a lighthouse to eat. Stop and see the P.O. Box 1142 memorial as well, which was dedicated to some secret work they were doing here during the wars. You can read all the backstory about this online if you're interested. 
We drove a few more miles on the parkway before pulling off in the town of Alexandria to go to the Bread and Water Company for lunch. Grab some sandwiches, now we're gonna go take them to the river, have a nice overlook for our lunch. Next up, we headed to Jones Point Park, which is home to a historic lighthouse and a beautiful bridge. This is the Woodrow Wilson Memorial Bridge. It was originally built in 1961, but a replacement bridge had to be built because of the amount of traffic that was going across it. It was completed in the early 2000s, and that's the bridge you see here today. Check out our epic picnic spot. Right next to the bridge and the Potomac. If you're looking for a good place for a picnic, this was a pretty sweet spot. That was a great spot to get lunch. Good sandwiches, Pops had some pie, potato salad. Now we're heading out to see a lighthouse before going on. As we're walking, this is the boundary of the District of Columbia. We're crossing right here. Pops is leaving the District of Columbia right now and entering into Maryland proper. From the parking area, it's about a quarter of a mile walk to get out to the lighthouse. We're passing the boundary again, so I guess we're back in DC. The historic Jones Point Lighthouse was a small river lighthouse along the Potomac. It was built in 1855 and it had a room the lighthouse keeper could stay in. The lighthouse was only used until 1926 and it's great that they still have this preserved structure you can see in the park. Be sure to also see the South Cornerstone. The stone was set here during the 1791 survey which created the District of Columbia. It's a cool little spot, it looks more like a house than does a lighthouse, but it doesn't need to be that tall when you're just along the river. Onward. You can always spend more time here if you want. There's a lot more interesting history, including the shipyard that used to be here. So there's the lighthouse we just explored, and then this shipyard would have been right here. Crazy. As the parkway heads through Alexandria, you'll be on city streets for a little while before the natural beauty comes back. As the road begins to follow the Potomac again, you'll arrive at one of Washington DC's major airports. This is the Ronald Reagan Airport, and I expected there to be a lot more traffic along the roadway here, but it wasn't too bad. Our next stop was right past the airport at Gravelly Point. From here, there's a beautiful park with park benches and a bike path, and you can watch the planes take off and land. If you've seen my other road trip videos, then you know I always love watching planes. This park's a great spot for the whole family as there's lots of grass area to run around, a bike path, and even some great views over towards the Washington Monument and Washington DC itself. Plus, the planes are taking off over your head every few minutes. Next stop is the Arlington National Cemetery. You can spend the entire day here, but we're just gonna see a few things. The Arlington National Cemetery was established in 1864 and it honors those who fought and died in our nation's wars. It's a meticulously well-kept up and beautiful property and you can spend the entire day exploring it. We don't have a lot of time left today, so we're taking the tram tour. We're gonna stop at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, explore a little bit, and then head on. The tram tour runs from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and it's an extra fee, but it is live narrated. It stops at three different places throughout the cemetery and you can get on and get off however you'd like. A few U.S. presidents are also buried in Arlington Cemetery. Among the most visited are the graves for John F. Kennedy, President Taft, and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. If you have the chance, you absolutely should visit the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and see the changing of the guard. This tomb was created to honor all those who lost their lives in combat and were never identified. It's a moving experience to see the guard continuously pacing in front of the tomb and to see how they changed them throughout the day. After watching the changing of the guard, we visited a family member's gravesite and then we continued on. You can also tour the historic Arlington House if you have time, but we didn't have time on this trip. 
I wasn't planning on coming to DC proper during this road trip, but I got a ticket yesterday for the Washington Monument to be able to go to the top. So I'm coming over here, I'm gonna go show you guys the top, pops away in the car, he didn't want any part of that. But once I come down, then we'll head on. Tickets to the Washington Monument are given out online 30 days in advance. They also give a few remaining tickets out 24 hours in advance, and I was able to get one the previous day. The elevator is on floor 500 right now, so we're just waiting for it to come down. I don't know where the rest of the people are, it's just me right now. A few more people ended up joining me and we took the elevator all the way to the top. The Washington Monument is 550 feet tall and it was actually built in two parts. The first third was completed in 1854, and then the other two thirds were completed in 1884. From the top, there's different windows that give you views in all four directions. It's a lot less claustrophobic than going up in the St. Louis Arch, and I loved being up here and seeing all the views. Look at how small my dad is in the center of this video, and you can see how far up we are. Eventually the next group came up the elevator and I made the walk to the small museum one floor below. Here you can learn about the history and the building of the monument while you're waiting for the elevator to come. Pops, we saw you at the top. I know, it was awesome. Are I you, saw you too. Are you bummed you didn't get to go to the top? Not at all. <laughs> Alright, that was awesome. Now we're going back on our road trip to finish up. If you want to see more Washington DC spots, I have a full video on how we spent 24 hours there. As we crossed back over the river, we went to the U.S. Marine Corps Memorial, as we couldn't go there when we were at Arlington Cemetery earlier. The memorial was built in 1954, and it was created after the iconic photo that shows the Marines raising the flag after the Battle of Iwo Jima. It's a beautiful memorial to see, and you shouldn't pass it before continuing on. Just a few minutes later, we got off the parkway again to visit Theodore Roosevelt Island. Our next stop is Theodore Roosevelt Island, which is his memorial since he was a naturalist, established many of the national parks. It's a 1.5 mile trail. Theodore Roosevelt Island is an 80 acre island that went by many different names over its history. Eventually it was given to the federal government and they used it to create a memorial to the 26th president. In the middle of the island you can see the memorial plaza with his statue right in the center. I think there's normally water around the plaza but there wasn't any when we were there. There he is, Theodore Roosevelt. One of the things I love about the memorials in Washington DC are all of the quotes they have from the different people. They had a few of his in the back that were great to read. After visiting the memorial, now we're heading around the island on the swamp trail and then back to the bridge. Hopefully there's some good views along the way, but this is a really pretty trail and island. This trail is so pretty. It's got an elevated boardwalk. There's some benches you can sit at and you would never know you're close to DC. Supposedly when they built this memorial they had to remove the farmland that was here and plant trees to make it look like the jungle it would have been before. About halfway down the swamp trail there's an overlook of a very swampy section. <laughs> This entire back section has been on an elevated boardwalk. We're not sure whether it's actually ADA. I don't think so, but I'm guessing that a lot of wheelchair users could probably use this section. I'm trying to figure out what all these things are, but I think Pops figured it out. Yeah, you look in the sunlight, there's a ton of minnows that are down in there. Now we're heading back that way towards the parking area. This truly is a stunning area and a great escape from the hustle and bustle of Washington DC. So I mean this is the terrain for most of the trail other than the boardwalk so I guess it's not super wheelchair accessible unless you have a little bit of a more off-road wheelchair. We're back at the bridge, we've got a few more stops before ending this road trip video. Bob's and I were noting that this is pretty crazy, you walk this way and you just see nature and then as you're walking back, you see the city in front of you. It's crazy, even though you are right next to the downtown, once you get on that island, you feel like you're 100 miles away, back in some forest somewhere. So it's a beautiful, short place to go to. 
as we left the island, it was getting later in the day and we only had a few miles left along the parkway. I saw a sign for Fort Marcy, so I pulled out to see it. After exploring for a little while, I wasn't really able to find anything to see here. I guess it's the remains of a Civil War defense area, but all I saw was one cannon in the trees and then a few picnic benches. I walked around the Fort Marcy area for a little while. I didn't see anything other than these picnic tables. There was a cannon, but that was about it. So I'm not sure if there's batteries somewhere, but let me know in the comments if there's something else to see here. It's a pretty park though. Shortly after that, we finished the George Washington Memorial Parkway with some traffic. I didn't see any sign that said end of parkway and we decided we wanted to continue on to see Great Falls. Driving to Great Falls adds about 20 minutes onto your road trip and it costs to get in if you don't have a National Parks Pass. That being said, it's well worth it and a beautiful natural area. With the traffic, we weren't really able to stop at the end of the parkway, but we're about 20 minutes off to see Great Falls and to end our video. Great Falls is an 800 acre park that goes right along the Potomac. The highlight though is the part of the river where it cascades over many different waterfalls. There are three different overlooks at the park that are accessed by about a half mile of hiking and that's what we did to end this video. Heading to overlook two. I think the first overlook is probably the best but it requires a little bit of scrambling to get to the viewpoint. Overlook two and three are both wheelchair accessible and also great views. Check out those high water marks right there and then look at this picture of the flooding. We could literally be underwater right now. Easily underwater, yeah, it's crazy. And we're like 40 feet above the water, that's so nuts. This is the third and last overlook. Overlook 3 was the furthest away so it gives you a good wide view of the waterfall, but it doesn't show how crazy the flow is like it does when you're up closer. When we were there we saw kayakers hiking over the middle island and we thought they might be going in the water to go over the waterfall. We decided to hike back to Overlook 1 to check it out. Three of them did end up going over the waterfall and it was crazy. If you're one of these kayakers, let me know and I'll send you the clip. Thanks so much for driving the George Washington Memorial Parkway with us. Hopefully you enjoyed this adventure. It was a little different, but we loved it. Hope you enjoyed it too. We'll see you in the next video.